ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله we bear witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is God, Him none other worthy to worship except Him, and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet peace be upon him, his last messenger, Sayyidina Muhammad, is the final messenger of God, and that he came with a certain message, and he came with a certain love, and he came with a certain mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah sends messenger to their community. And it is known in our tradition that every community is sent a messenger and that there is no community that has not been sent a messenger. For us, we are the lucky ones that the Prophet ﷺ is our messenger. For our beloved brother and our beloved Prophet Musa والسلام, he wanted to be a part of this ummah and he actually had an interaction with God to be a part of this ummah. But Allah told him to be happy for where he placed him <laughs> and that uh, the ummah of Ahmed will come later and that the ummah Ahmed would have many, many beautiful and merciful openings that other communities do not have. An example is that you can pray wherever you want, right? Other communities didn't have that. Um, many multiple other examples. Uh, community of Ahmed that is enveloped within. Um, another one is that Allah will, for, will be for, there for us on the day of judgment. Um, it's also one of the main reasons why we say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. We bear witness that there is no God but God, and we bear witness that Muhammad is the final messenger, is the messenger and prophet of God, not was. The story hasn't ended. It's not a was. It still is. And there's still um, more to the story to come that all of humanity will also bear witness. Because on the day of judgment, what happens is every community will go to its prophet. Every community will go to its prophet and beg their prophet to go to God to start the day of judgment, just to start the day of judgment from the sheer agony or anticipation or wait. Um, and every prophet would say, this is not for me. Every messenger would say, this is not for me. And we know this, and we know this in our tradition. You probably heard it since you were in kindergarten or what have you, or since from the first time that you've embraced the tradition you know that there's a, a hadith that there is a known narration that on the day of judgment every community will come to adam or come to uh noah or come to moses or come to jesus and they will all point to sayyidina muhammad and when he receives humanity to start this uh day uh he doesn't deny anyone but he says, this is what I'm here for, or this is what I'm created for, or this is what uh, I am made for. That's their prophet, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you should feel happy that you're a part of that community, that you get to mention the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for he had the most beautiful of hearts, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has the most encompassing of hearts, and he had the most radiant of face, right? One of the companions used to compare him to the to the moon. And it's not coincidence that when he enters into Medina for the first time, when he enters into the blessed city of Medina, which was known as Yathrib at the time, right? It's not without any coincidence that they chose to say Tala al Badra, right? That the, the full moon has arose, right? Uh, on us on that day. Meaning the Prophet. He didn't come at nighttime. Um, it wasn't it wasn't during the night. The moon wasn't up. But he is the moon, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of the main reasons why he has that light is because he's always reflecting God's light. Because he's always with God in every moment. 
his heart has never for one iota, as we know from our scholars and from our teachers and from this tradition, that he hadn't had a moment where he was not interacting with God. Even when he was with people, he was with God. And when he was alone, he was with God. And when he was with his family, he was with God. And even when he was doing something for himself, it was with God. And that's a heart that's always awakened, which is really interesting because the Prophet Sallallahu was known to sleep, but not like how we sleep which is why he never had to renew his wudu or his illumination or his ritual bath, right? After his sleep. Why? Because his heart never really slept, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's always in communion with God. Um, those are the little subtleties about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa But why do I bring up his heart? His heart, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is something uh, to be studied, I believe. And I'm not talking just about his physical heart. We know that there's a narration where our, our beloved angel Gabriel and Mikael uh, come to the Prophet ﷺ when he was a child. And they split his chest open and they remove a certain black seed that is in that area. And they put my Zemzem on there. They put the water of Zemzem on it, which is really ironic because I, I, my father's a cardiologist my brother is a cardiologist they deal a lot with uh you know things of the heart the physical heart and they deal a lot with uh even heart replacement surgery right the water that you place on there has to be a specific type of cleansing water when they bring the heart out right that has a lot of ions zemzem has the same uh abilities uh, Zemzem has those uh, ions enough to be able to cleanse the heart and keep it in the state that it needs to be to be placed uh, into the body, right? Which is really amazing and interesting. That's a that's the thing about Zemzem, the water that comes from our beloved Mother Hagar. But that's neither here or there right now. But the reason why I'm bringing up the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu is because he also mentions a hadith, a narration where he says, "Verily, in the body there is a piece of flesh." The entire body up truly it is the heart uh the quran is the word of god also mentioned that no except qalbin salim right except with a sound heart or except with a tranquil heart the heart in islamic um i don't like the word islamic that much but the heart in muslim understanding or tradition is a big factor to who you are, is a big factor on what uh, you can become. And when your heart is connected to the heart of the Prophet wasallam, that your heart is able to expand. And just like how that little dot was removed from the Prophet wasallam's heart, when your heart connects to the Prophet wasallam's heart, then many dots that you might have in your heart from bad deeds or things that you've looked at or things that you've listened to or heard or things that, that innately are with you that you might not be proud of or ashamed of or are trying to get rid of, the Prophet wasallam is able through the mentioning of him, uh, through the, the, the ability of getting to know him, to the ability of following his sunnah, you are able to cleanse that heart. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his command is, Ya ayyuhaladina aminu, all you who believe, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taseema, send peace and blessings upon him, right? This is a reason to get closer to the Prophet by doing so. But it's also a way to clean your heart. But it's also a way to become healthier as a human being by attaching yourself to the most healthy one, the Prophet ﷺ. For the Prophet ﷺ, his whole life, and the companions would say this, that his, his chest and his stomach would never exceed from each other. That he had a flat stomach, ﷺ. He was never obese, right? Uh, when he ate, he ate little. There's the one-third rule that I mentioned to my patients all the time. And they're like, wow, where did you get that wisdom from? I'm like, this is from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, right? One-third air, one-third food, one-third water, right? This is for the health of the body. The Prophet ﷺ practiced that all the time. 
he probably uh, did probably less than one third at times, right? Um, the Prophet Sallallahu was here and sent down to humanity as a mercy and as a way, a guidance to people, a guidance to us. And we are a part of his ummah. And it's known that anyone that comes after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are a part of his ummah. They are a part of his community. They are a part of this uh, religious, uh, quote unquote, family that comes after him. That is the Prophet's ummah. So for us, when we hear that there's this peace uh, a flesh in the body and if it's sound the whole body is sound and if it's corrupt the whole body is corrupted is the heart right this is the prophet وسلم, telling us if you want to live a life of health uh, a life of youthfulness a life of um, complete tranquility then you have to focus on your heart and then god reaffirms it by saying nobody will enter the garden unless they have a sound heart meaning that you have to work on this thing, your heart, right? Um, I have to always work on my body, right? I feel like uh, I was telling my wife, man, I'm overweight. I don't know how I'm going to get back into shape. And she, she's like, man, you always talk about it, but you never be about it, right? So it's a good way, you know, your, 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 your family and your, your spouses, they're always just right to the truth. They don't, they don't mess around. So, uh, you know, I'm like, that's true. You know, I'm always talking about it, but I'm never doing it, you know? Um, how can I do it? So, you know, I start doing like five push-ups after every prayer, just five push-ups after every prayer, um, five days, all right, five times a day after, okay, I feel a little bit stronger than I do maybe 10, right? Maybe I do 15 after some time. And before I know it, I'm, I'm building a baseline of, of some kind of upper body strength and then so forth and so forth. But those first five, the first 10, they're always the hardest. You're shaking, you're a little embarrassed, you're self-conscious about who's around you, who's not around you, right? Um, you're thinking, man, can I really can we do this for a long time? Can I not? Uh, but before you know it, you know, if, if you want to get to a certain place or a certain destination, you continue. Believe it or not, the hard way. Uh, maybe mentioning Allah once is hard for your heart because it's filled with other things, right? Uh, then you mention it once a day. And then before you know it, you mention it twice a day. And then if you know it, you mention God five times, six times a day, seven times a day. And then before you know it, you realize that it's easy for you to mention God without feeling a certain type of way. Because what happens is like there's this cleansing this healing process in mentioning God. There's a healing in mentioning, right? Uh, right? Is it not verily by the remembrance of Allah do the hearts feel content? When you mention God, you should realize that the Prophet's whole being used to mention God. It wasn't just his lips, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And even when he didn't mention God and you gazed upon him, you remembered God. That's who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was like. And there are people in this time, in this age living, that when you look upon them, they right away you start to remember your sins. Or you start to remember what you've done that's not so good or you're embarrassed about. Or you look upon them and you start to remember God and you're, you're feeling kind of weird. Sometimes you can't even sit with them too long because they make you look at your own self as it really is. And it's hard in the beginning to sit with them because they remind you of something that your soul has been yearning for from the moment of its existence on this earth, which is to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is then allows you to be a complete whole human being. And the Prophet was the one and he was of human beings, even though would have no in his house, extremely hard to do. Um, children, uh, I can't imagine a day where I have to look at them. And I pray I'm not tested in this way because I believe I'm weak. Um, and say, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't feed you today. Uh, I can't give you what you're looking for. You know, that lollipop, we can't afford it. 
um, it scares me. But the Prophet ﷺ, he's magnanimous. He, he's, he hits those, those days all the time. And he wasn't fearful of those days. Um, in fact, many times when he did attain a certain amount of wealth, he gave it all up, which is really amazing. Uh, because in this paradigm, when we attain a certain amount of wealth, uh, we, we hold on to it and we try to increase it, which is very good, right? It's not a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't do so. I'm not saying it's healthy not to do so, right? You have to look after your family and your kids and the ability to sustain a certain type of wealth for the livelihood in the times that we live in now, in the complexities of our times that we're in as well, right? That's the norm of the society. You can't escape it, right? But if you were to um, give a little bit of what might hurt you, right? I guarantee you all it will do is cause healing and cause you to have uh, even more wealth. And it's tried and tested. Anything that flows, I'll give you an example. We just, we just moved into, and speaking about monetarily, monetary things and speaking about things of, of wealth or whatnot, we just moved into a new home, all right? I'm a first time homeowner now, right? It's a big step in America, right? Living the American dream, you're a first time homeowner. Uh, but the home hasn't really been lived in for maybe six to eight months beforehand, okay? You turn on that water for the first time, for all of you who've had this experience, and the water will smell like rotten eggs. It does, the water will smell like rotten eggs. And you're like, whoa, is something wrong with the piping? Is something wrong with the water? What's going on? Stagnation. Stagnation is what destroys things, not flow. When you turn that water on, right, first day or two, it smells like rotten eggs. Later on in the week, it smells a lot better. Two weeks later, because of the flow of the water and its ability to leave and come back and be recycled, leave and come back and be recycled, it becomes something that you can actually bathe in, that you actually feel clean afterwards uh, being around and with, and you're not running away from the smell. Wealth is like that. Stagnation of wealth uh, in terms of giving and coming, giving and coming of a stench. But if you're able to recycle through, to give and recycle through at times, that allows for you to have a certain healing in your wealth, healing in your home, healing in your family. And in some narrations, it actually protects you from um, certain calamities in your life. It's amazing. Um, the heart. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all with heart hearts that are, that, are, that are yearning for Allah and His Prophet at all times, no matter what states we're in. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and to forgive all of you. فَاسْتَغْفُرُوهُ فَإِنَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. We ask God to send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet and his family and companions. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Kama sallayta wa sallamta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim fil alimeen. Innaka hamidun majid wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad. Kama barik na Ibrahim ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim fil alimeen. Innaka hamidun majid. Healing is an interesting term and uh, we're in Talif diving into that. Uh, collectively um, this past week and all the way to the end of the year, uh, my pain is a path to healing. And, uh, you know, many of us might have heard that term before. Many of us are about healing. Many of us might be in healthcare or wellness or some kind of, um, um, uh, you know, uh, community activity where we try to give some kind of together um, but this term of healing or health when we think of it the first thing that we should think about is what are we trying to heal from 
if you don't know what you're trying to heal from, there's no healing. Uh, many of us are walking in this earth with true pain and true hurt, um, true agony of certain things that have happened to them, maybe when they were younger, maybe when they're older, maybe right now. And the reality is we haven't even pinpoint what that thing might be to even start healing from it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet peace be upon him, he always had a knack, he always had an ability to pinpoint where the hurt is coming from and to help people heal past it. When the Prophet Sallallahu was coming back from a battle, right, he sees a boy, a young boy, and the young boy is crying and he sits next to the boy. And this is coming back from a battle that he, quote unquote, just lost. And he sits next to awareness to out of the everyone in see that boy as who's in pain and who's hurt right now, given that he's leading a community, leading a government, leading a battle, right? Leading men who are just hurt or wounded, coming back to people that they'll ha he'll have to tell them that their spouses have just passed, bury people, but he was still present enough to look at that boy and to ask him, and to ask him. Uh, to me, that's just unbelievable. That's just unbelievable. Uh, I'm too busy for my own son. Well, I got to go to leave Jumu'ah, board meeting, blah, 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 right? Oh, I, I'm sorry, I can't sit with you for two seconds. Uh, oh, you're crying? Oh, talk to mama. Mom, mama will help you real quick. But this is not even the son of the Prophet And look how merciful he is to him. And look where his heart is at. And look how present he is. He goes to the boy and he asks him, what's going on? And the boy tells him his bird dies. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is known narration that he doesn't leave the boy's side till the boy smiles. That's healing. He doesn't leave the boy's side till the boy smiles. That's true prophetic nature. That's healing. He finds the root cause. He sits with them. He's present with them. He, he gives them their time, and then eventually he allows them to get to a place of maybe um, summing up the courage of a smile. That's the Prophet Sallallahu But he does that to every single individual he's encountered, period. Whether they hated him or they loved him. Whether they wanted to follow him or did not. We see it over and over and over again. The Prophet Sallallahu he himself, his presence at times was a healing for the companions. That's why they say that the hardest day that the companions ever witnessed was the day in which the Prophet Sallallahu passed. Everyone's healing is different. Everyone's healing is different. Some people take more time. Some people take less time. Some people uh, need more acknowledgement. Other need to be left alone. Um, some people need tough love. Others need to be held by the hand and taken. That's all respectable. The Prophet ﷺ would allow for that healing to happen differently for every single one of those individuals without judging them and without allowing them to feel insufficient for their inability to get to where he wants them to go. Because that's all he did with the companions. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he goes, this is the prophet. And he's gone. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, uh, that's Sayyidina Abu Bakr, right? Uh, he goes, this is the prophet. And he goes, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an. Not like that. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an. What did he need? He needed tough love. He needed tough love. You guys don't believe me? We know very clearly the day that he enters into this religion is the day that the Prophet ﷺ grabs him by the collar and tells him, what do you want, O Umar? Or what do you need? Or what did you come here for, O Umar? Huh? And he showed Umar, like, no, this religion is not about weakness. Right? Uh, this, he needed something else, Sayyidina Umar. 
He needed to see where is the strength, how he can get past what is in his heart still against this religion. And the Prophet is stronger than 40 men in one narration, right? So when he wants to, he's a lion. So he, everyone's afraid when Sayyidina Umar knocks on the door and except Sayyidina Hamza, Sayyidina Hamza says, don't worry, let him in. If we want to, uh, we'll take care of him with his own weapon. <laughs> That's Sayyidina Hamza, right? That's the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ who defends the Prophet ﷺ. And then when the door is open, who grabs him? Is it Hamza? No, the Prophet ﷺ comes out and grabs him, grabs him by the collar and says, what do you want? What are you coming here for, o Umar? And he says, I'm here to accept. And the scholars would say that that last piece of shaking, right? That was actually the last piece of healing that Umar needed to enter into the tradition where his heart became content. That's Sayyidina Umar. But Sayyidina Abu Bakr didn't need that. Sayyidina Abu Bakr's healing was different. Sayyidina Abu Bakr was different. He's a Siddiq, right? Sayyidina Ali was different. We're all different. Uh, we're all going to take time to allow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam into entering our hearts. But the fact that we're striving for it is the key. Uh, the end goal really is not in your hand. In our tradition, we never really graduate. There's no graduation. Nobody's going to come to you and say, MashaAllah, put something on your head. Put Although, by the way, the Muslims came up with the graduation process. If you guys don't believe me, go look at the history. The robes that people wear till this day, that's the robes that Muslims used to do. In, and you can ask Dr. Will Caldwell. He's here right now. He'll tell you all about it. Right? They, they invented that process of showing people like, this is a scholar, right? But in our tradition, we never really graduate. We never really graduate. You won't know where you're at in the path. You won't know. You'll, you might assume, you might assume, but you won't know. And one of the best ways to get to know, maybe, if Allah wants you to know, if it's good and beneficial for you to know, is uh, to get to know yourself to get to know what you need to heal from, to get to know what's holding you back from doing certain things, or to get to know that actually, it's very good that I'm being held back from doing this thing as well. Because many of us want certain things, but Allah wants certain things for you. And it's when you submit to that is when you become an individual that's on the path to that tranquil heart, where there's no more agitation or fight between what God wants or ordains, or what you want. When those two align, then you have tawfiq, and you have real healing, and you're on a real path to and with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqooli khuli ala. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet and his family and companions, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of us and to bless all of us and to be with all of us and to not allow us to leave this moment of remembrance virtually and physically, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven all of us and our families and everything that we've ever done inwardly and outwardly for he's able to do so and he is more than willing and more, more, more than merciful than anything that we've ever encountered. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we ask you, to help us in these days and in these times we ask you ya rabbal alameen to be with us and if we ya rabbal alameen need healing which you know the things that we need to heal ya rabbal alameen to give us it and to help people to us that are ya rabbal alameen to you ya rabbal alameen and they help us in that way and they are with us in that way and they are here we ask that you are sincere, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and to help others away as well, and not to hinder them, and not to stand in front of them, or not to stand before you, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and them, and in between them, Ya Rabbil Alameen, but to only open doors to you and to your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, you know everything that's going around us, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and you know our states, and you know our diseases outwardly and inwardly, and you know this pandemic 
and you know what everyone's dealing with y'all online you know the tribulations of everyone that we know and we don't know ya rabbal alamin that you can help us through it ya allah ya allah ya allah we're asking you to make us patient through it and to make us thankful through it and to give us gratitude through it and to make it easy for us and to make it easy for our families and all of them that are around us ya rabbal alamin we ask ya allah for everything that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked for and we ask ya rabbal alamin to keep us away from everything that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked you to keep him away from ya allah Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Qimu Salah.